We've been married 48 Eight. years. <laughs> I grew up in the Blue Ridge Mountains in Virginia. That becomes part of who you are. And I grew up in a suburban environment, but learning to work with my hands and to make everything that we needed, and we've done that throughout our lives. They find the material they need on regular walks in the woods. Every day the forest changes, it doesn't go back, it's always changing. A new storm comes, a new tree is blown down and now we have new inventory. All those things that are happening stimulate ideas. Ideas that may start small, like these models, but when creating art out of 100 foot trees, you have to think big. We always work very big, they're always very cumbersome, very complicated and, and very difficult. And there's always a possibility that they might not even be successful. There's a lot of, you know, yikes, and then yes you can, and the team that worked with us was fantastic. The result? A spectacular display of creativity and ingenuity. Trees are possibly our greatest partner on the planet. So what we're doing is we're working with that actual stuff of the forest, so we, we're not competing with it. That's kind of tricky because, you know, we don't want it to be so integrated that you can't find it or that it doesn't make any difference. It has humanity attached to it. It's a very sweet kind of relationship within a bold composition. Made from nature, this art is designed to return to its roots. Our pieces have what we call a, a natural life. They're in the environment. They're going to go through all, all the things that everything else in the, in the forest is going through. So it changes the color and it starts to uh, attract insects. It's on its journey through time. Brian Kelly made a career photographing champions. I spent nearly six or seven years traveling the world and shooting professional skateboarders. These days, he's still after the perfect shot, but of a very different kind of champion. Over the last two years, I've transitioned to documenting champion trees. A champion tree is the largest of its species, as measured by a standardized point system and confirmed by American Forest, which registers champion trees. So there could be bigger ones out there. They constantly have nominations flooding in. You can find a champion tree almost anywhere. Including Martha's Vineyard, where this 182-year-old pagoda tree enjoys champion status. You see one massive tree and people are like, that's a big tree. And you're like, yeah, imagine when like a forest used to look like that. Bob Leverett and the members of the Native Tree Society don't have to imagine. They regularly visit Mohawk Trail State Forest. There, they meticulously track and measure some of the tallest trees in the state. We have measured, confirmed with great accuracy, 146 white pines over 150 feet in height and with a, at least a couple going over 170 feet. Getting to that height takes time. One old growth tree here is more than 500 years old, while these tall pines are closer to 150. What's got Leverett and his team excited today is the fact that these trees are still growing. That makes it 157.7. Ooh! <laughs> It has grown. I had it at about 156 and a half. That's good news. Growth means the tree is still sequestering or holding carbon while releasing the oxygen we breathe. So when we talk about carbon sequestration, we're really talking about the product of photosynthesis. As long as the tree is alive and photosynthesizing, it's sequestering carbon. Even if the tree is dead, as long as it's still there, if that carbon that it contains is still sequestered, in that wood. This is important because carbon is a major factor in global warming. The New York Times cites new forest as a major weapon against climate change. But Leverett believes that protecting these tall, old growth trees is just as important. These trees continue to grow rapidly. They are doing some of their best growing between the ages of 50 and 150 years. Despite the science, a visually shrinking ice cap, and international calls for action on climate change, some say they just don't see it. Back at Harvard Forest, John O'Keefe sees it and documents its effect on trees. I started observing these trees 30 years ago. It was partly a way to force myself to get out in the woods on a regular basis and look at what was happening. Starting at the beginning of September, I'll go out and estimate what percent of the leaves are no longer green and what percentage have fallen. Virtually all of the trees I'm observing are 
dropping their leaves later each fall or over the 30 years, it's a steady trend toward a later fall. In the spring, the oaks are showing the strongest response towards having their leaves come out earlier, which is important because they're the dominant trees in the forest. However, longer summers and record heat do threaten some of the oldest climate warriors. Champion trees like the Bennett juniper, which Brian Kelly hopes to document before it's too late. It's constantly being threatened by forest fires. I'd like to try to spend the next year potentially focusing on trees that are threatened by climate change. Kelly is so taken by his current mission that he splits time living between his converted van and a cabin in the woods of upstate New York. It's a lifestyle journalist Richard Higgins knows well. After all, he wrote a book about Concord's most famous cabin dweller, Henry David Thoreau. He had this emotional connection to trees, but he also understood them scientifically in a way that very few people have. He loved the details that separate trees. Now, most of us just don't see the beauty of trees because they're right in front of us, but we're not taking the time to look at them. He lived at the nadir, the worst point of deforestation, and yet he believed that trees would reinstate themselves, would somehow would come back, and obviously that's been true in space. But he had faith in a seed. And photographer Brian Kelly says that he likes to spend hours with his trees, preferably during the sunset hours because the light is the best. In addition to that, he records audio, live ambient sound around the tree. So not only do you see the tree, you get to hear it because he posts that online as well. Very nice. Next, it's a tree with a message. <laughs> Merry Christmas.